so don't try to shut folks out, don't try to shut them down, no matter how much you might disagree with them. There's been a trend around the country of trying to get colleges to disinvite. Speakers with a different point of view, or disrupt a politician's rally. Don't do that no matter how ridiculous or offensive you might find the things that come out of their mouths. Because as my grandmother used to tell me, every time a fool speaks. They are just advertising their own ignorance. Let them talk. Let them talk. If you don't. You just make them a victim, and then they can avoid accountability. That doesn't mean you shouldn't challenge them. Have the confidence to challenge them, the confidence in the rightness of your position. There will be times when you shouldn't compromise your core values, your integrity. And you will have the responsibility to speak up in the face of injustice. But listen. Engage. If the other side has a point. Learn from them. If they're wrong, rebut them. Teach them. Beat them on the battlefield of ideas. And you might as well start practicing now, because one thing I can guarantee you. You will have to deal with ignorance, hatred, racism, foolishness, trifling folks. So that's my advice. That's how you change things. Change isn't something that happens every four years or eight years. Change is not placing your faith in any particular politician and then just putting your feet up and saying, OK, go. Change is the effort of committed citizens who hitch their wagons.
to something bigger than themselves and fight for it every single day. That's what Thurgood Marshall understood a man who once walked this year. Graduated from Howard Law, went home to Baltimore, started his own law practice. He and his mentor, Charles Hamilton Houston, rolled up their sleeves and they set out to overturn segregation. They worked through the NAACP. Filed dozens of lawsuits, fought dozens of cases. And after nearly 20 years of effort 20 years Thurgood Marshall ultimately succeeded. in bringing his righteous cause before the Supreme Court, and securing the ruling in Brown v. Board of Education that separate could never be equal. Marshall. Houston they knew it would not be easy. They knew it would not be quick. They knew all sorts of obstacles would stand in their way. They knew that even if they won, that would just be the beginning of a longer march to equality. But they had discipline. They had persistence. They had faith and a sense of humor. and they made life better for all Americans. And I know you graduates share those qualities. I know it because I've learned about some of the young people graduating here today. There's a young woman named Sierra Jefferson, who's graduating with you. And I'm just going to use her as an example. I hope you don't mind. Sierra. Sierra grew up in Detroit and was raised by a poor single mom who worked seven days a week in an auto plant. And for a time, her family found themselves without a place to call home.
they bounced around between friends and family who might take them in. By her senior year, Sierra was up at 5 a.m. every day, juggling homework. Extracurricular activities, volunteering, all while taking care of her little sister. But she knew that education was her ticket to a better life. So she never. Gave up. Pushed herself to excel. This daughter of a single mom who works on. The assembly line turned down a full scholarship to Harvard to come to Howard. And today, like many of you, Sierra is the first in her family to graduate from college. And then, she says, she's going to go back to her hometown, just like Thurgood Marshall did. To make sure all the working folks she grew up with have access to the health care they need and deserve. As she puts it, she's going to be a change agent. She's going to reach back and help folks like her succeed. And people like Sierra are why I remain optimistic about America. James Baldwin once wrote, not everything that is faced can be changed. But nothing can be changed until it is faced. Graduates each of us is only here because someone else faced down challenges for us. We are only who we are because someone else struggled and sacrificed for us. That's not just Thurgood Marshall's story, or Sierra's story. Or my story, or your story that is the story of America. A story whispered by slaves in the cotton fields, the song of marchers in Selma. The dream of a king in the shadow of Lincoln.
The Prayer of Immigrants Who Set Out for a New World The Roar of Women Demanding the Vote The rallying cry of workers who built America. And the GIs who bled overseas for our freedom. Now it's your turn. And the good news is, you're ready. And when your journey seems too hard. And when you run into a chorus of cynics who tell you that you're being foolish to keep believing or that you can't do something. Or that you should just give up, or you should just settle you might. Say to yourself a little phrase that I've found handy these last eight years, yes, we can. Congratulations, Class of 2016. Barack Obama Speech at Radkany Square in Prague Delivered April 5, 2009, Czech Republic Thank you so much. Thank you for this wonderful welcome. Thank you to the people. Of Prague. Thank you to the people of the Czech Republic. Today, I'm proud to stand here with you in the middle of this great city, in the center of Europe. And, to paraphrase one of my predecessors, I am also proud to be the man who brought Michelle Obama to Prague.1. To MR. President, Mr. Prime Minister, to all the dignitaries who are here, thank you for your extraordinary hospitality. And to the people of the Czech Republic, thank you for your friendship to the United States. I've learned over many years to appreciate the good company and
the good humor of the Czech people in my hometown of Chicago. Behind me is a statue of a hero of the Czech people Tomáš Masaryk. In 1918, after America had pledged its support for Czech independence. Masaryk spoke to a crowd in Chicago that was estimated to be over 100. Zero, 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 I don't think I can match his record but I am honored to follow his footsteps from Chicago to Prague. For over a thousand years, Prague has set itself apart from any other city in any other place. You've known war and peace. You've seen empires rise and fall. You've led revolutions in the arts and science, in politics, and in poetry. Through it all, the people of Prague have insisted on pursuing their own path, and defining their own destiny. And this city this golden city which is both ancient and Youthful stands as a living monument to your unconquerable spirit. When I was born, the world was divided, and our nations were faced with very different circumstances. Few people would have predicted that someone like me would one day become the President of the United States. Few people would have predicted that an American President would one day be permitted to speak to an audience like this in Prague. Few would have imagined that the Czech Republic would become a free nation. A member of NATO, a leader of a united Europe. Those ideas would have been dismissed as dreams. We are here today because enough people ignored the voices who told them that the world could not change. We're here today because of the courage of those who stood up and took risks to say that freedom is a right for all people.
no matter what side of a wall they live on, and no matter what they look like. We are here today because of the Prague Spring because the simple and principled pursuit of liberty. An opportunity shamed those who relied on the power of tanks and arms to put down the will of a people. We are here today because 20 years ago, the people of the city took to the streets to claim the promise of a new day. And the fundamental human rights that had been denied them for far too long. Sematova Revolus. The Velvet Revolution taught us many things. It showed us that peaceful protest could shake the foundations of an empire. and expose the emptiness of an ideology. It showed us that small countries can play a pivotal role in world events. and that young people can lead the way in overcoming old conflicts. And it proved that moral leadership is more powerful than any weapon. That's why I'm speaking to you in the center of a Europe that is peaceful. United and free because ordinary people believed that divisions could be bridged, even when their leaders did not. They believed that walls could come down, that peace could prevail. We are here today because Americans and Czechs believed against all odds that today could be possible. Now, we share this common history. But now this generation our generation cannot stand still. We, too. Have a choice to make. As the world has become less divided, it has become more interconnected. And we've seen events move faster than our ability to control them a global economy in crisis, a changing climate.
the persistent dangers of old conflicts, new threats, and the spread of catastrophic weapons.